All right, so thank you, Alvaro. Um, so this is uh, this work is part of um, the Nurse uh, Summer CS program that just ended recently. Uh, and in this work, we try to find a workflow to optimize the uh, the weather research and forecasting model wharf on uh, on Perlmutter. And this actually involves a slightly different use of of Cody, um, which I will explain in this talk. But so for those unfamiliar with WARF, um, it's a very popular atmospheric model. So it's uh, it was written in Fortran back in the 1990s by several agencies like NCAR and NCEP. And at its core, it solves the uh, 3D other equations using finite differences and explicit runge kata time stepper. It's currently used in many uh, different um, different ways in both research and also live forecasting and also uh, other things like modeling aerosol or atmospheric chemicals. And for this work, we do have um, a fork of WARF um, on the NURSE repo as well, if you want to see. Currently, WARF is uh, paralyzed in two ways. One is through domain decomposition. So here, uh, see the whole domain. It's being divided into uh, what's called patches. So this each patch would reside in an MPI rank. And we also have the option of using OpenMP for each, uh, each patch where we distribute the different tiles um, into the OpenMP cores uh, in the shared memory. Although I believe that uh, recently it's no longer recommended to use uh, the combined approach. One goal of this work is to take advantage of the GPU resources um, on Perlmutter. So the, the approach would be to, instead of offloading the work in each patch to a uh, uh, to the OpenMP course, we offload the work to a GPU, right? So one GPU per MPI rank, that's the starting point. And to help with that, we also wanted to explore a optimization workflow where we use a combined um, method of runtime profilers like GProf or uh, NVIDIA Insight tools, as well as uh, Kodi. So the, the step here would be to first use the profilers to gain a big picture view of the hotspots in the program. And we once we select a hotspot, we can use then use Kodi to get a more detailed um, analysis uh, on, on the source code. And the specific routine that we wanted to work on is called the uh, fast spectral bin microphysics. So I'm not going to go into the details here, but essentially what this routine does is for each uh, grid point of the 3D domain of WARF, it loops over these discrete uh, bins intervals. And that translates to having a lot of uh, computation per grid point. So we figured that this is a good starting point um, to start optimizing WARF. And the setup that we use on Perlmutter is this. So the case will be a thunderstorm called Conus, 12 kilometers. So it's a, it's a moderately sized uh, grid. So it's only about 400 times 300 in the horizontal domain and about 50 layers um, in the uh, vertical domain. And for the compilers, we use uh, NVIDIA compilers. So originally, WARF was set up using GNU compilers, but we found that GNU compilers is not uh, fully supported for using uh, open and open MP offloading for GPUs. But in, in but uh, and the NVIDIA compilers uh, do quite well at this point. And these are, um, as mentioned previously, the flags for the um, the offloading. And we use the option four for WARF where uh, we use both MPI and OpenMP, although in this work, we'll actually be using only a single um, OpenMP core. So technically it's still just a pure MPI um, 
set up. So as mentioned, the first step is to use the eight runtime profilers to gain insight into the, the big hotspots. And we found that the FSBM routine actually uh, takes about half, at least half of the total runtime of WARF. So this is a output generated by gprof two dot. It uh, uses the GraphViz library to visualize results from gprof. And within the FSBM routine, we also see that there are um, deeper calls to, to different functions, which also takes a lot of time. If we look inside this subroutine, the main uh, fast SBM routine, we see that the structure is, it loops over the grid points, the 3D grid points, um, I, J, K. And this function called bot new is what takes a lot of time as seen here, about 35% of the total time. So ideally you want to, um, if the work in each, each call to this routine is independent, we want to offload each grid point to a GPU thread, right? That's the most straightforward um, approach. So the, the approach that we selected here was to use OpenMP offloading. Um, I believe it's also uh, has been mentioned briefly before, but it, uh, essentially you want to assign each iteration of the triple nested loop to each uh, CUDA thread. And, but that works as long as there's no race conditions uh, within each call to this subroutine, right? Now, if you look inside the this subroutine, there's actually a call to this function called kernel ks. The issue here is that this function does call a shared array. So here, it loops through the uh, different bins. So this is a 2D uh, loop inside this function, which calls global arrays for each particle species. So there are eight, actually 18 more of these. So the issue here is that if we leave them as is, uh, these arrays would prevent us from assigning each call to each GPU thread essentially, because this is a shared state, right? So we want to um, see what Cody can, can uh, what Cody can help us with this. So the steps here are, as, as mentioned, we run uh, Cody, sorry, we first compile WARF using bear. So it just captures the, the decompilation flags. Then we run the Cody screening uh, report. And to specifically focus on the FSBM routine, we can just um, select the specific uh, lines of the subroutine here. Where And here I choose to uh, select the uh, offload OpenMP option, which try to find uh, a way to uh, offload the loops to um, GPUs with OpenMP. Although we know that we won't be using uh, this rewrite because again, this, this function is being called for each grid point. So it's going to be too fine grained uh, to offload these, loop, these loops themselves to GPUs. But we want to see, as, 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 I'll, as, as I'll show, uh, this actually gives, gives a lot of useful information on how the loop structure actually works. So this is what uh, Cody outputs. So the in place OpenMP directives are shown here. There are two places where it's modified. Now there are two pieces of information here that are useful. The first one is this map from uh, clause. And it refers to these two uh, global arrays. So the map from clause indicates that these arrays are actually write only for each call to this subroutine. That is, they're not actually the subsequent, the previous values from different grid points aren't actually used. They are overwritten for each call. 
So that actually tells us that there's no logical uh, dependence between each call to this function among different grid points. So in principle, we should be able to assign uh, each call to this function to each CUDA thread. The second piece of, of information is in the, the loop directives. So the parallel do and the SIMD clauses. So having those two uh, being inserted by Cody indicates that the loops, there are no loop carry dependencies. That is each iteration of this nested loop is independent of the other um, iterations. That means we can simply calculate uh, each individual entry M and N without using any state at all. So we can simply remove uh, this, these global arrays and compute each um, individual value on the fly. Right. And that's what we did. We actually uh, replaced uh, these global arrays their ac or their axes by pure functions, uh, which accepts as arguments the specific uh, indices, M and N. And so this completely gets rid of the shared global state between the different grid points. And from this alone, we actually see quite a significant speed up. We get around 40% uh, speed up uh, for two reasons. One is that not all of the 18 uh, ar arrays like these were actually used uh, in the routine. And also not every um, entry M and N is actually used in the subsequent um, accesses to these um, arrays. So this is a benefit from uh, using a lazy approach to calculating these um, collision values. So now going back to the, the main uh, loop on the grid points, we can finally insert the um, OpenMP uh, GPU offload, assigning each uh, grid point to a CUDA thread now that the call to this function is independent. So um, not shown here, but we also did some more memory optimizations to fully collapse them into uh, the three, three loops. And here are some of the, the speeds up the speed ups that we measured um, using the, the Kona's test case uh, for 10 minutes. Again, we use only one OpenMP thread per rank. So essentially it's just a pure, pure MPI run and we use one GPU per rank. The speed up on the uh, the Cobot new routine itself is about 66 times. And in the overall wharf speed up, we see about 2.2 uh, times. And finally, we also uh, tested the runs on different configurations. So here we try to fix the number of GPUs, but increase the number of, number of MPI ranks. So in the first case, we use um, 16 GPUs for 16 ranks. So one GPU, per, one rank per GPU. And then move on to their two 64 ranks. So here we have, in this case, we have two ranks per GPU and four ranks per GPU. And we do see a, a, a decrease in, in speed up uh, from about two to about 1.56 in this case. But this is not uh, an, an ideal setup because we're not using the, um, the multi-process uh, service from CUDA, which allows us to um, interleave uh, the multiple um, executions on one GPU. This is a simple, um, serial execution from multiple ranks on one GPU. Um, so to summarize, we have worked on optimizing a big part of 
WARF, which is the fastest spectral bin microphysics routine GPUs. And the starting point was in restructuring the uh, the the collision loops that allowed us to uh, create um, independent um, iterations to upload to to the GPU uh, to the CUDA threads, and this was enabled by information that was provided by uh, the dependency analysis of Cody. And for the results, we get about 2.2 times speed up in the one GPU per Iran case. And from a broader perspective, I think having a combination of both runtimes and um, a static code and analysis is really helpful for a complex code base like WARF, um, especially for those not fully familiar with the physics of WARF. So in my case, um, my background is in uh, storm surge simulations on finite elements methods. I'm not fully familiar with the atmospheric physics um, or the microphysics in WARF. And in, in, in this case, it's the, the program analysis that as provided by Cody was really helpful for me. And take any questions, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Do we have a question from Carl? Yes. Yeah, and thanks for the nice presentation. Emma. Now, could you go back and say a bit more about um, where you recognize the the data independence in the global arrays? I guess I'm not clear where those pure function calls got inserted. So are oh, yes. they so are they here at this level, or is it a higher level? No. So basically, we uh, replaced all instances of these arrays by function calls, right? So in 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 subsequent routines um, after this, it's calling like let's say CWLG um, M and N. We we replace those those statements by a call to this instead. And and so those so this get CWLG um is doing what had been in that loop. Yes, it's it's actually doing what has been contained in, in these loops. So did you get rid of the loops? Each you... Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, I'm wondering what, what... Stefan was asking too. So did you get rid of this these loops completely then? Yes. Um, so is it just a matter of of um, that that these that these global arrays then are not needed anywhere else? And so you didn't even need to have those global arrays. So the global arrays were at were um they were needed, I think, in one spot after after this function call. But they were the the first the original method was to pre-compute uh, these values at the beginning of each call to each grid point. Right? Okay. But it turns out that it's actually faster if we calculate each value on on the fly. I see. And so the so you're completely getting rid of the global arrays then that you you're you don't actually need the global storage and that. Is what made the big difference. Yes, there there might be some loss in uh, reusing the values, but we found that it's in this case it's faster to recompute than actually to reuse. I see. Okay, thank you. That that helps quite a bit. But uh, you. are you still using the GPU for this or not? I mean, we, I guess we do probably... because uh, the 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 global structure is this right. So. The each CUDA thread is being called for each grid point, so mm -hmm. the the calculations of of these are still done. So calcul calculations of these for each grid point is still done by a single CUDA thread. Okay, I guess, I guess the issue is that we don't you don't show what these C kern values where they you know how they're calculated, and the fact that the data resides on the GPU. At that point, right? The C kern underscore one underscore two. 
Oh yeah. So as uh, I should have mentioned this, but before uh, these uh, these triple loops, we do have uh, directives to move data to GPUs and then move back if necessary. So is it, and that came from Cody or or not? That is uh, manually inserted because uh, if it sees a, I guess it's being hidden inside this function call. So Cody can't always see that currently. Mm -hmm. like I'm trying to understand how much did Cody help you for figuring out all of this, you know. So it's mainly for uh, the dependency and analysis of of the loops here. Mm -hmm. Then we're able to um, kind of re kind of refactor the code. So it's not a really direct use of the of the Cody functionality seen so far. It's using the functionality of Cody that's that's part of the of the um, GPU offload functionality of Cody. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Nemo, for the presentation. So it's really good a, a smart usage of Cody um, because if Cody has done all sorts of all the all the scope analysis for you, so you understand it better without knowing the actual code of physics. But you know these are global arrays, how they're used, and then are they you know independent, um, and vectorized with SIMD. So now you have um, can um, based on that do your more optimizations. Well, of of course, though, uh, I think you're gonna hear more from um, Cody team for the applications modernization and using Cody for scope, and for actually inserting OpenMP and, and um, OpenSys directives for you as well. Um, so yeah, multiple ways of using Cody. I guess that's a good point. Did you uh, did you pay attention to all the recommendation for modernizing the Fortran? Oh yes, those are done in um, other subroutines. This one is pretty good already. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Does does Cody ever recommend that you um, parallelize a loop that is not currently parallelized? Uh, no, uh, Cody usually uh, doesn't report false positives. Uh, it is very conservative in that regard. Uh, our al internal algorithm <clears throat> prefers uh, to to fall back to unknown and don't report uh, an offloading opportunity or multi-thing opportunity uh, before uh, the possibility of uh, flying uh, false positive. Okay, thank you. 